Here's the cool thing about pitch logic. The first few throws were cutter, cutter. 77% on the first one, 56% on the second one, 88% on the last one. And it's not that we're always gonna be chasing spin efficiency, but look how much horizontal movement you got on that one in comparison to the ones that deemed it as a cutter. And that's where I think we don't try to just emphasize pitch data stuff. Like, no, you, it's the mechanics that allow for the consistency of your release. And I think for you, it's the load, and then it's getting in that load to that last second and then going. And again, this is an amplified environment. We're not gonna pitch like that, you know what I'm saying? But it's a good window of visualizing like, oh, that's me locked behind the baseball. Patience, give me that little bit of patience there at the very end when you drop. Boom. Uh -huh. 90 freaking 3%. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, now the goal is, as soon as we continue through getting you closer and closer to the mound, obviously you're gonna need more tempo and more acceleration, but it's a really good starting point for you to be like, I know I'm good when I'm here and I'm like expressing this patience instead of like, and this is why I think where we did the last analysis, it was like the slope was so aggressive that as soon as you lift, gravity was like, you're mine. You know what I'm saying? Like, come to me. And that's just getting you going here. And then it's like, your brain goes, dude, I'm already accelerating a ton I'm gonna come down pretty soon I don't have time to load right but if you go no I need to load now I have time for everything same thing leg lift down to me patience mm -hmm. yep good dude and I think for you you're you're this right you're a two seam guy but you're holding the four seam yeah, I'd say go two seams. I mean, this is giving us a, I've never seen your data yeah. and it, I love data and I try not to because it's, it's bad for everyone involved. But like if you're a two seam guy, 85 is perfect for your efficiency. And then now it's just the goal of like, how close can we get to getting 20 and 10? Yeah. Uh huh. Yes, because yeah, I mean, shoot. Right? Like now we're at freaking 18 and one. I'm not gonna say like that's consistent off a slope. Your velo's way down, obviously. It's not throwing 100 miles an hour. But the idea of like, where do I need to be load wise to get the most consistent behind the baseball with my fingers? Like, that's what that looks like. Stay low. Stay low. Go. Up down. Yeah. Yep. 89. Patience. Go. Mm. Yeah. I gotta say, dude, pitch logic's sick. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's sick. That's just a really good testament to you because it's like, as soon as we got it, right? As soon as you went from like, I'm throwing cutters, I'm throwing cutters to I'm throwing freaking four seamers. Now it's like locked, 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 yeah. locked. You know what I'm saying? Okay, now you do not have that, but you'll have a five pound counterbalance because now once we have the range with load, you just slowly start to take away the, the amount of load to where now you can just do it on your own. The idea of that is just once you get to the point where you were at when you dropped the, the med ball, you're not gonna drop that ball. You're just gonna go from there to like, all right, now it's time to throw. Yes. Now that's gonna start to propel your desire to want to accelerate, right? That's still a really good rep, obviously with the 98 skill PL, hashtag discount code Robbie 10. But it's, it, to me, it looked like you got there and it was like, I gotta accelerate. And then the acceleration turned into like, <clears throat> really aggressive spin instead of like snap. Yes. See, I just look at that as like complete ownership of your load. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, I have like the patience in there. See, I would even encourage you to stay around 80 because anytime you get to like 90 above with a two seamer, it's gonna wanna freaking ride. It's really good. Whatever that feels like right now, just go ahead and download that blueprint. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, dude, you're pretty locked every single time. I thought for sure you were gonna be a guy that had like the big deviation of the arrows. As soon as I come down, it's not about like owning it now. It's about like being violent to where it's like, huh? Uh. The move here is abduction, but the abduction isn't throwing us out of our load. Because if we can do that, now the abduction is coming from a loaded state, which is a super stabilized posture. Sometimes our load gets only so much stability that it has to where it like, it can just only fall. But this will allow it to be so stable that we can now abduct in it. Down, throw that out. Yeah, yeah. But see, it's, I don't want you to get out of like, does that make sense? So I don't want you to go huh, into your throat. Yeah. I want you to go like, huh? Kind of sit into it. Yeah, like, huh? All right, it's out. Now let's go. Yeah. And even if it just, you press it out to like right here, yeah. right? 
the goal is to stay in your load while you do that. Maybe this will be better. Yeah, see the difference? Yeah. Feel the difference. One is like slow, controlled. I have expression of this range at all speeds and tempo. It's not gonna throw me off if I go slow. It's not gonna throw me off if I go fast. Okay, now we're dipping into some freaking Bugs Bunny stuff. Your arm's feeling pretty good? Yeah. Get the load, get the ball. I'll, I'll do it to where it's like out of the way too, so you don't have to worry about it. And then just slowly start just increasing the speed at, at, at the end of the delivery. Yes. Uh-huh, beep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this. You're gonna come leg lift, cross. Give me a two. Yeah. It's really hard, but it becomes slow and controlled to express force. That tempo, that, that stimuli is over. Now we move on to a different chapter, and that chapter is freaking, I'm gonna come at you with some cheddar cheese. I think the more that we can kind of segment that. Yeah, see, that's almost just too, it's, you're too good. Give it to me. Yep. Part of me wants to just be like, yo, sorry, I dude, but we're gonna have to do this every single catch play for the next two. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it's gonna take, but like at the same time, just make sure before you get your throwing in for the day, like if you can just guarantee me that like the first throws we do, the first movements that we teach our body when we go to overhead throw are like these, we're, we're cooking. Yeah. Now, if you can start doing it on your own, that's just more stability. Your lead leg, theoretically, I like to counterbalance my lead leg. I think you're more of a linear guy, but if I go here, A, I'm locking in my pelvis, and then B, I can swing and gate that ball out and then go into my throw. Now watch the lesson from last time. When you went into free range throwing, it was like load, hop, huh, Yeah. right? Because you had all this range. And that's just your brain telling you that you need more time because you're not allowing the load to happen organically. So you cut yourself off. You get restricted in the drive phase. So that's how smart your brain is. It's saying, hey, dude, we need to buy more time for this kid because the hands got to sync up with the, th the lead foot. So like if we get the load right, we're synced up. The, the brain doesn't have to compromise the lead leg. So now we're linear. This is just more to have. You know who's you know a good comp for you is Evaldi. I want you to be nasty, Nate. We're gonna go over the head. We're gonna throw nine different pitches and have eight different windup hesitations. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I'd say, maybe stay away from the one that you go over the ball. Yeah. Because as soon as you go over it, the lead, or the drive has to pop. 